So, in 2008, hold on, let me, in 2008, February 2008, specifically February 12th of 2008, sometime in the a.m., I was visited in my basement by a very short, silent being that hovered around the foot of my bed. Oh, it wasn't a bed, it was a couch. But at the end of the couch where my feet were is where that alien was. Slightly off to the right side, obviously not on top of me, not on the couch, standing to the side of my couch. I was completely paralyzed. Initially when I woke up paralyzed, it was a normal experience because I have experienced sleep paralysis my entire life, off and on. More in my youth, um, it happened since I've learned about it and since I've had this specific experience I'm talking about, it has been a very rare occurrence. And often when it does happen, um, now if I experience it, I've learned um, to trigger out-of-body experiences or um, astral projection. So when it happens to me now, I'm not afraid. And I understand it better now, so I'm able to, you know, kind of maneuver my way into a positive experience um, rather than a, a scary one, because sleep paralysis can be scary. Uh, anyways, I woke completely paralyzed, and my uh, TV was on in the basement, and uh, the light was still flickering. I had fallen asleep with the TV on. Uh, and um, so my head was completely still, and my eyes were open, and I could only see in the direction my head was facing. Um, I couldn't see to my left. Uh, I couldn't see the TV to my right, but I could see the light. Obviously, it was projecting into the dark room. And here comes this being floating around. It seemed like it floated because it wasn't s stepping. You know, when human beings walk, we kind of we bounce a little bit. The thing didn't... It just it moved like it was on a conveyor belt. And uh, my initial response was not fear, but it was more like a, aha, finally I get to see you. Because I've had many experiences leading up to that point where I felt the presence or where I, where I felt pressure on my bed, uh, pressure on my body, not just energetic pressure, because there, there is a difference when you're having an out-of-body experience, especially an astral projection, self-induced more so. You will feel great weight. You will feel pressure before you actually, you know, leave your body. I say leave your body, but your soul never leaves your body during these astral projection experiences. It's just your energetic projection or your consciousness, however you want to say it, not your soul. Soul stays in your body. So technically, you don't really leave your body. You just project your consciousness. Anyways, I'm kind of going back and forth with this, the, the OBEs and what I'm, what I'm bringing to the table here today. And uh, the reason why I'm making this video about this experience is because I want to put it out there and I want to start elaborating more on astral projection and out-of-body experiences and interactions with um, interdimensional or otherworldly entities. Uh, the, the being that I encountered, uh, what I was saying, as it, I say floated, who knows what the hell it was doing, as it maneuvered around the couch and came into my line of sight, it stopped right in my line of sight. Um, it wasn't off to the left, it wasn't off to the right, it was right in my line of sight, the way my, my head was facing, my eyes were facing. Again, I was paralyzed, I couldn't move. Um, at that point, <laughs> excuse me, at that point, as I looked at this thing, it was like, like I said, it was like a light bulb going off, or it was like, finally, you know, I've been sensing you my whole life, and now I'm looking at you, what do you want, um... And there was a point where I became aware of something to my left. It felt like a presence. And it felt like a sudden arrival, like it just transported or materialized in my, in my basement. And there was no doors opening and closing. These things didn't walk down my stairs. I believe there was two. I only saw the one, but I believe there was a second 
entity in the basement, possibly a third, and they definitely were um, interdimensional. They they were they were interesting to say the least. But the one is that I'm speaking of, the one I saw, looked like your stereotypical gray, but it had a suit. It had a very dark black, uh, leathery. It, it was like not shiny like uh, latex rubber or it was like a weird material I can't describe it I, I didn't get to touch it or anything but it was black and I could tell that it was a suit it wasn't skin it wasn't um, organic biological matter you know it was it was a suit and um, around its neck right here it had like a collar type thing that I, I could I could make out ridges around its neck like something came up and closed and almost like a zipper line going down the middle of your shirt, but it wasn't a zipper, but it was just, I could tell something was going on there. And then it caught, I finally looked into this thing's eyes, and uh, I'm staring in its eyes, and I'm examining it at the same time, and I noticed, like, I'm thinking it kind of looks like a gray. Is this a gray? You know, but it didn't have a very large head, and it, it didn't really have almond eyes, although the eyes were very big, but it didn't, it had a, an, an interesting appearance. I don't know. I mean, I've heard the, I've heard other people describe certain beings that they have come into contact with, and uh, I've heard people describe some stuff, entities that looked like what I saw. It looked like a gray, but it looked like a more of a human version of a gray. And my, why I say human is just the shape of the head, and um, the proportion of the entire body, because grays are usually. Um, depicted as having a very large head and spindly limbs and a very, you know, weak-looking body. This little, he was little, you know, he or she or sexual gender, I don't know. I just say he, I'll say he. He was little, but he looked sturdy, you know. He, I could make out shoulders, I could make out arms, and I made out his head clearly, and he didn't move. Once he got into my line of sight and stopped, he just stared at me. And when I looked into his eyes... It was like a hypnotizing experience. I was just gazing into this thing's eyes, like thinking, you know, what next? And at that moment, I felt presence to the left of me. And then I felt a very painful, a very um, hard um, pressure. It was like a pressure pinch snap feeling in the region of my um, root chakra. And um, it almost felt like, it felt like I was being violated. And uh, I remember initially trying to move. But all I could do, because the way my head, my arm was at my side and I could see my hand. And the only thing I could do was get my hand to tremble with all my might. That is all I could do. And in my mind, I was screaming, no, 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 right at this thing's face. And the next thing that uh, I experienced was another jolt from my root chakra. And then my eyes closed against my will. I was trying to keep my eyes open, but they slowly closed. And as they closed, I'm still seeing this thing. And they closed, and they stayed closed. I don't know how much time went by, but I was still conscious, but my eyes were closed. I couldn't open them. Finally, I was able to open my eyes, and everybody was gone. And there was nothing standing there anymore, but I was still paralyzed. And um, I was slowly trying to move my fingers, trying to move my toes, and I slowly, finally, like, the Tin Man, you know, trying to get the oil in his joints. So finally, it was a weird feeling, like I was just some, like something was wearing off, kind of feeling. And I finally got like snapped out of it, like it, like was able to sit up. And I just sat up. And I immediately wrote the experience down. And uh, well, I shouldn't say immediately wrote it down. The first thing I did was pray for that to never happen again. Uh, I prayed for a long time for that to never happen again. And I just put it out there in the universe. You know, just, no, that'll not, no. 
I'm not not participating. Whatever that was, I don't know what it was. I don't know what they're harvesting for the blah, blah, for a hybrid program. All these crazy theories out there. I have I couldn't even tell you what they did to me. But it felt more of like an energetic thing. It felt like they were messing with my energy. Um, other than that, I had no physical scars on my body or no evidence of any physical. I think it was completely energetic. And um, it never happened again. It never happened again. And uh, I've talked a few times to people when I ask me, well, do you think you're hallucinating? You think you were dreaming? And I know I wasn't because my whole life I have been having sleep paralysis, out-of-body experiences, lucid dreaming, induced astral projection. I taught myself, I meditated and practiced and taught myself how to lead my body consciously. And it's not easy. I can't just, I'm not saying I can do it this very second and say, here, let me show you how I do it. It takes a lot of time. And you open doors to things that you might not want to experience. And I don't know what I did. I don't know what happened. But I know it happened. And I know what I saw in my basement wasn't a hallucination. It was real. And I know there's a lot of you out there that have similar stories and don't come forward because you might feel or fear the ridicule or feel stupid or not trust what you experienced. Maybe it was a hallucination. Maybe, you know, you're crazy. No. Please come forward. Um, that's my story. It's as weird as it sounds. It happened. Thanks for watching. If you did, thank you. Please share if you have any experiences of your own. I'm going to try and create this channel to be geared towards um, unexplained paranormal experiences and just garden variety weird stuff. Take care, my friends. Peace.